Welcome to this short video guide to the Great Wildebeest Migration. The Great Migration is an ongoing cycle where over 2 million grazers, wildebeest, gazelles and zebra make their way clockwise around the Serengeti National Park and the Maso Mara in search of fresh grasses. Contrary to a common misconception, the migration can always be seen in Tanzania's Serengeti National Park and only a proportion of the herds cross into Kenya in August and September. The herds move in a circular route throughout the year and there are definitely better and worse times to see them. The two most popular times are the calving season in Indutu from January to March and between the months of July and October when the herds are crisscrossing the Mara River in the Kogatendi Lamai area of the park. In between these times the herds are not so concentrated, so although you will always find them, their impact is not the same. Instead of plains filled with hundreds of thousands of wildebeest, there are sporadic groups of thousands or hundreds. Also, some months are more transitional than others. This is when the wildebeest are on the move, and all using slightly different paths to get from A to B. In these months it can be difficult to predict where they will be in advance. Where to stay to see the migration depends on the time of year you're visiting. You should base your choice on location and try to go where the herds traditionally are at that time of year. However, the migration is not the most predictable of things and any trip requires a degree of luck. Remember, the Serengeti is huge, 30,000 square kilometres, which is roughly the size of Belgium, so you cannot rely on driving to see them if they're at the other end of the park. Luckily, there are mobile camps which move around the Serengeti to be best situated for the migration's traditional path. Most of these camps move between the Cogatente and Lamai area of the northern Serengeti in July and October to the Indutu Plains in the southwest for the calving season from December until March. Some also move for a third time to the Western Corridor in June, but most only move twice. These mobile camps are incredibly atmospheric. There's nothing quite like waking up to the grunting of the migration surrounding your tent. The best value mobile camp is Chaka at $800 per person per night. Moving up in luxury is Ubuntu at $1,000 per person per night. Serengeti Safari Camp also at $1,000 per person per night and Komondo at $1,100 per person per night. Up again and you have the beautiful Serian at $1,200 per person per night and Olakira at the same price. And then the most luxurious, Serengeti Under Canvas at $1,300 per person per night. There are also permanent lodges peppered throughout the Serengeti and we will go into more detail of these as we walk you through the migrations route. January to March. By January, most of the herds have congregated in the Ndutu Plains for the calving season. Ndutu is in the Ngorogoro Conservation Area, which means rich, nutrient soils for the young calves to give them the best start in life. By mid-January, calving season is in full swing, and more than 8,000 calves are born daily. Aside from the sheer volume of grazers in the area, which is phenomenal to see in itself, the young calves also attract an immense number of predators. In fact, from January to February, the Indutu Plains have the highest concentration of predators anywhere on the planet, which means seriously explosive predator action. Even though calving season is mostly over by the end of March, the chances are that some or most of the herds will linger in the nutrient-rich grasses of the southern plains until the end of the month. At this time of year, we would recommend only staying at the mobile camps. It's the only permanent camp here is in Duty Lodge, which is very basic. April and May. Although rainfall can make the herd spread out a bit, the migration in April is similar to the previous few months. You will most likely not catch calving season, but most of the wildebeest will linger around the southern plains of Cassini and Ndutu, as they do in March, although some will have dispersed to the east, west, and a few a little bit north. May is the first big push of the year from the wildebeest as they ultimately head for the Mara River in the north. Around this time, the best place to see the big herds is usually the central Serengeti region of Serenera. Towards the end of the month, a lot of the herds will be heading up to the western corridor around the Grometi region. The problem in April and May is that there are often heavy rains in the Serengeti and so the herds do tend to disperse. At this time of year, due to the heavy rains, the mobile camps are not as fun so we recommend one of the more permanent structures around the central Serengeti area. Kyoto is a good tent to camp at this region at $400 per person per night. 
step up the luxury a bit and you have the beautiful Dunia at $600 per person per night, which in high season is more like $1,000 per person per night. Towards the end of May, if you like your safaris luxurious, then we would recommend the private Singhito Brometi Reserve in the Western Corridor, namely Sasakwa, Faro Faro and Sabora, which are all priced at around $2,000 per person per night in these off-season months. June. The transitional period we see in May continues throughout June. By early June, usually around a fifth of the herds are in the Western Grometi region as they face their first obstacle in their journey, the Grometi River. However, the Grometi is not where the famous huge river crossings happen. These happen later on when the herds have reached the Mara River. The weather at this time of year can be difficult to predict, and therefore so can the wildebeest. As the rains change, the herds can double back on themselves. Some may make their way to the central Serengeti, whilst others will linger for most of the month in the Western Corridor, whilst a few may push north early. It's a very testing time for us to be able to predict, as it does change from year to year. June is also the peak of the rutting period, which involves a lot of noise and is a very interesting time to be in the midst of the herds. Although it's tricky to predict, if you base yourself in two different areas then you have a very good chance of catching some big herds. We would recommend a mixture of the central Serengeti camps like Dunia or Kyoto and the western luxury of Singita. July to October. The end of July is classically the month which sees the first of the mega Mara river crossings. It is another big movement month for the herds, as many that were lingering in the western corridor make their way north in search of greener pastures. However, in the first few weeks of the month, it is a mistake to solely focus on the north as they will often not arrive until mid-July to late July. By August, wave after wave of herds will be arriving in the northern Cogatende Lamai region. And once they have arrived, river crossings can happen daily, often more than once a day, for the next three months. Remember, crossings are not something that happens one week and is over the next. Once the wildebeest reach the Mara River, some will linger, some will cross in huge herds, hundreds, thousands, or tens of thousands strong. And bizarrely, some may cross back the same or the next day. There are 11 crossing points for the Mara River between Kogatende and Namai, which the herds tend to use, as these are the easiest ways to cross and the ones that they have used before. The name of the game in these months is to see where the biggest build-ups are happening and drive to them in the hope that they cross. Many people have misconceptions about the geography here. As you can see from the map, the Mara River in northern Tanzania separates the areas of Kogatende and Lamai. Both these areas are in the Serengeti in Tanzania, and so you will always catch a migration in the Serengeti in these months. Additionally, some of the herds will move further into the eastern part of the Masai Mara and cross the Mara River here from west to east. To labour the point, the river crossings are not between Tanzania and Kenya, but between one area of Tanzania and another, and one area of Kenya and another. So, to summarise, Northern Serengeti is the place to be with the best chance of catching a crossing throughout this period. It is not a single mass movement, but more a chaotic gathering, which can mean river crossings happen daily in this month. Only some of them make their way into Kenya's Masai Mara, and the crossings in Kenya are infinitely more touristy than in Tanzania. You would be very unlucky for the wildebeest not to be surrounding the Mara River if you decide to go from late July until October. On the flip side though, the crossings are not daily, and no matter how many hours are spent waiting with a herd by the riverbanks, they simply may not decide to cross for hours. Places to stay in this month are the mobile tenter camps, or their own permanent options such as Nomad Lamai and Sayari, both priced at around $1,500 per person per night in peak season. These are great if you want to be in a more permanent structure with a pool and all the mod cons. November. The likelihood is that at the beginning of November the herds are still lingering in the northern Serengeti regions of Kogatende and Lamai, and you can still catch river crossings at this time. Towards the end of the month, by the time the light rains have kicked in, the wildebeest begin to descend south in the second big migration of the year. On their descent south, they splinter off into different parts of the Serengeti, and many of them come south in the Loliondo region, which borders the Serengeti to the east. To be safe, in November, we would recommend a combination of a northern Serengeti camp and one in the more central region. Aside from the camps already mentioned, there's another seriously good option at this time of year, the wonderful Namiri Plain, which lies to the east of the Serengeti. 
priced at $1,400 per person per night. This is a predator paradise, and there is only one other camp nearby, so you get all the action to yourself. December. December is a very popular time of year to be in the Serengeti, as it is mainly dry and the wildlife is excellent. Although December is a somewhat transitional month for the migration, like the end of November, the park is still going to be busy with tourists seeking an adventurous Christmas period, but only towards the end of the month. If you want to avoid the crowds and peak season prices, then go before the 20th of December. Where to stay in December would be a combination of a mobile camp, which are all in the Ndutu area of the Serengeti in preparation for calving season, and one of the central Serengeti camps, as well as Namiri Plains in the east. So, there you have it. The Great Migration in a nutshell. I hope this little explanation has helped clarify what the Great Migration is all about. If you are considering visiting, we would highly recommend talking to one of our experts to discuss.